I've never felt so confused and ashamed, he thought to himself as he hid in the bushes. He'd no idea what he was going to do next. He shivered again. He wasn't sure if the shivers were an after effect of having nearly been arrested or the fact that he was stark naked. His mind raced as he remembered with terror the events of the last few hours. Why had the master predicted that they would all fall away when only minutes before we had been singing the Passover hymn together? What was the story with Judas? Was Peter mad altogether trying to decapitate the chief priest's man? It was only a few hours ago that they'd all been around the table, together eating and drinking and celebrating the feast. The master was saying strange things about being betrayed. Even after he, he had done that weird ritual of washing our feet, it was a little embarrassing, really. I mean, who does that? Mind you, less embarrassing than hiding out here like Adam waiting for Eve. He hunched down a little lower when he heard voices. I hope it's not soldiers. The voices passed without anyone seem seeming to notice him. There were literally thousands of pilgrims in the city sleeping all over the place. It was hard not to fall over them. As he thought back to the garden where the master went to pray, he hadn't been included in the inner circle to go further with him. It was a welcome chance to get a bit of sleep. The wine and the food always had that effect on him. The master looked wrecked when he woke us all up, like really stressed. And then suddenly there was that cacophony of noise and lanterns, madness and instantly terrifying. We all had promised that we would not leave him no matter what. And then suddenly we were all running in different directions. Anything to get away from the temple guards and soldiers. I wonder how the master is. What are they doing to him? Will he really be killed as he said he would? A shiver ran through the young man again as he thought of what might happen and then tried to put it out of his mind. He had more immediate matters to attend to, like how was he going to get somewhere safe and where was he going to get something to wear? What had the master said about Solomon in all his glory, not being clothed like the flowers in the field and not to worry about clothes. Well, at this very moment in time, he was worried. Casting up a prayer, finally, he picked up the courage to leave the safety of the bush and scurry down the road, hoping to find some kind pilgrim who would give him something to wear. This story is imagining the reaction of the young man who ended up running away from the soldiers. The soldiers had tried to grab him and instead had just held on to his linen tunic, which ripped from his body. He ended up completely naked. I can only imagine the stress he was under in the situation. Like Joseph in Egypt, who ran away from Potiphar's wife, he only escaped by leaving his garments behind him. This part of the story is only mentioned in Mark's Gospel, and there has been much speculation over the years that the young man mentioned in the story is in fact Mark himself. If it was him, and I think there are compelling reasons to suggest that it probably was, his disgrace was complete. Like the other disciples, he had high hopes that when the test came, he would stand firm that he would always stand with Jesus. When it came down to it, Jesus' words were true. They all ran away. When he had needed them most as he prayed that night in Gethsemane, the disciples had fallen asleep. Ultimately, they really let him down. Through tiredness, fear, and perhaps in Judas's case, disappointment that things hadn't worked out the way he hoped they would. 
We also live in a world of confusion, of disloyalty, of doing what suits ourselves. And maybe this part of the Easter story asks us to pause for a moment and ask ourselves, how loyal are we prepared to be? Will we stay with the master when life doesn't work out as we had hoped? When others tell us we're foolish or stupid, when it may be embarrassing to confirm that we're one of those strange followers of Jesus, will we be happy to affirm our belief? The church is called to live in the world as it is and to stay loyal to Christ regardless of whatever happens. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would help us and equip us to be those people. Amen.